It is just beyond the hugest honor to be able to get Grant Cardone to come back on my show for a second time. Grant, you are a legend in my house. I got four boys, 21, 23, 25, 27. They listen to your show every day. Every time I walk into my house, they either got you on the big screen, on YouTube, Facebook. But anyway, Grant Cardone is a New York Times bestselling author and an internationally renowned speaker on leadership, real estate investing, entrepreneurship, and finance. His five privately held companies have annual revenues exceeding $100 million. His latest book, Be Obsessed or Be Average, is releasing October 11, 2016. The book is the number one new release on Amazon.com in entrepreneurship, personal finance, business, motivation, self-improvement. Me and all my boys have read his The Millionaire Booklet, How to Get Super Rich, The Closer's Survival Guide, and seller be sold. And Grant, the reason I keep trying to introduce you to all my dentist homies is the fact that they think that they're the doctor and they just go in there and tell you, you need this surgery, this tooth fix, and you just say, okay, they don't understand sales. They don't understand closing. They, they, they never know if they should rent their dental office or buy the real estate. And they're very worried that corporate dentistry is going to take over dentistry like Walgreens did to pharmacists. Yeah. So, so, and why, first of all, let me just say, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Why, why do you think corporations are going to grab up these independent owners? Cause they know they can, they see you guys, no offense. Okay. But this is the reality of the situation. They see you as sheep. They see you as, as easy pickings, as we say in Louisiana, they see you as targets, man, because you guys aren't all in. You've made no commitment. When a, when, a, when a person goes into business, whether it's an accountant, a lawyer, a dentist, an author, you're starting a business in the beginning and you don't know whether to throw down and pay for the stuff or lease the stuff. Dude, you, you, the problem is a commitment. You know, you're basically coming out, you're coming out of school saying, how am I going to pay my debt down? That's not what you should have been thinking. There's people thinking about how to take over an entire city of dentistry right now. They're not thinking about how do we pay, uh, how, how do we how do we grow our business enough to pay our debt that, by the way, is is three years old and we left college and we're trying to figure out how to pay off eighty thousand dollars. They're trying. They're thinking about how do I take over this town, the state, and the country? And you're sitting there. You're sitting there thinking about how do I pay my bills? You're thinking so little. Okay. You're thinking how should I hire a receptionist? Should I give this person, th this assistant that does great at upselling people, should I give her a raise? Oh my God, should I pay her a piece of that $20,000 job? Should I give her 400 bucks as a bonus for doing that? So, so the, my point is, and I'm gonna start this off by everybody just hating my guts. <laughs> Look, you're either gonna get obsessed or you're gonna be average. There's no choices. The obsessed win the game. In sports, they win. In art, they win. In the movie business, they win. In dentistry, they win. It's a brutal world out there. There's no in-between. The obsessed win the game. The average get punished. How do, how do you take a mindset of a dentist or a physician who just thinks selling is a four-letter word and they just they just find it repulsive and they say things like, I, don't wanna, I didn't go to college eight years to be a used car salesman? I think you need to look at your financial statement. I think you need to study a financial statement, whether it's one at home or the, the one at the office, okay? The top, the top one and a half inches of your financial statement is your entire problem. Now, I, ha I have an accounting back background, okay? I know, I know enough about accounting that I'm going to pay an accountant. I'm going to tell him what to put on that damn thing. But my job is to make sure that financial statement, that one and a half inches, takes care of the, the next 50 pages. One and a half inches takes care of everything. So, so, so w w w but the point is this, you call it revenue, you call it gross receipts, gross revenue. Uh, I don't know what you call it on a dentistry financial statement. I can look it up real quick. Look, income solves all, solves all problems. Okay. So if you don't like sales, you don't like income. If you don't like sales, you don't like revenue. If you don't like sales, you don't like survival. If you don't like sales, you actually don't even believe in the product you 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 offer people. Grant, a lot of these kids come out of, uh, they're averaging about $350,000 of student loans, and they think they should go get a job at these uh, corporate dental chains that have taken over about 15% of the market, 
until they pay down their $350,000 student loans and launch their own business. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? Well, let, let, let me just say this. I'm looking at a dentistry, uh, dentistry financial statement right now or income statement. The first line says patient revenue. And then they got about 12 lines underneath that of expenses. So, so if you guys don't like revenue, don't learn how to sell anything. Okay. I, I, I only go to a dentist for the problem I'm having at the moment. Now, now I had, I had this tooth that broke. And I went into the dentist, the dentist fixed the tooth, couldn't sell me on the gum thing, all the gum, the gum receding that's going on. It's going to go on in any 58 year old man. Did not, did not, did not solve the pump on the grinding, the grinding that I'm doing this, calling the receding. Okay. So what do I do? I keep putting it off three different dentists. Nobody can sell, sell me, solve the problem. Give me the assurances, bring my certainty up to where I'd give them 20 grand rather than 400 bucks. I had the 20 grand. Okay. I spent that much in fuel. The, the tooth broke while I was in California after I flew over there. It, it's ridiculous, man. The person had me in the chair, man. It's crazy. Like, like Howard, they had me in the chair, bro. My credit card, my credit card is good, man. I got room on the damn thing. It's got no limit. And the person had me already had the freaking pain medicine in my face <laughs> and could not get me to move this from $500 or whatever the number was to 18 grand. And, and, and I'm, and, and I'm going to spend that to fly back to Miami. So why not? Because you don't, you, you're not either not committed to revenue. You, you don't understand how much money it actually takes to run a business or you don't understand the threat in the marketplace. And that is back to this question, Howard, about the car, the corporates, they're going to come gobble you up because you're asleep. They're looking at your practice saying, if, Wilbur can make 400 grand a year. He doesn't expand. He doesn't buy new equipment. He doesn't sell anybody. He doesn't upsell. He has no systems in place, no processes. He abhors revenue. He thinks selling is, a, is for used car salesmen. They're like, we'll buy that business, dude. We'll give the guy a premium for the business. We'll buy the business and we'll take a $400,000 business and turn it into a million six. And that is going to attract the young guy out of college, okay, that doesn't know any more than how to be a dentist. It reduces his risk. His mommy told him not to take any risk. He takes a job rather than starting a business, and he's trapped for the next 40 years. So I would tell that guy, hey, learn how to run a business. So Don't learn how to be a dentist. So if you come out of school, should you pay your student loans off before Absolutely. you go buy a dental office? Absolutely not. Might never pay him back again. Might never pay the government back. I agree. I came out of school and eighty-seven thousand dollars in student loans thirty years ago, which is quarter of a million today. And I opened up my own office from scratch in four months. I, I agree. The best way to pay it back, build a big business. Um, dude, 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 you guys should put off. You should put off everything you don't have to pay. I know this is not a popular message. Look, look, there's some things that you just put on the back burner way back. Okay. So before, before I pay back the federal government who waste every penny, every penny that they're given, they waste before you're going to pay them back. Before you pay them back, you need to build your business, build your business first, pay them later. A lot, a lot of people are scared and nervous because they think this election in 30 days is, uh, um, could uh, topsy turvy the markets? Where 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 do you read this election in thirty days? What do you think that's all about? It's it, it uh, we're we're both what? the same age. It looks like uh yeah. this is one of the wildest elections we've seen in our lifetime. Have you ever seen a more uh, contested presidential election in your lifetime? I mean, I think we're down to two idiots again. You know, nobody likes no nobody likes either one of them. I mean, look, no, you know, I, she's gonna if she wins, she's gonna die in office. So it's going to be that other guy that looks like the clown. And, and, and if he wins, they're going to kill him. So it's going to be Pence. That's what I think people need, should need plan on. Okay. Like the bottom line is this, you know, the good news is when your choices are so bad, Howard, then you're like, okay, there's three people at the party. 
Hillary, Trump, and me. So, so it just clarifies every. I was at a party the other night and everybody was talking Republican, Democrat. I'm like, hey, dude, it's me. It's up to me. Don't you guys get it? It's up to you. Okay. And, and, and that's where we're at now. It's probably always been up to the individual. The good news in America, un, unlike Iran or, or maybe North Korea or other parts of the world, here you could be a dentist, man. How much money can a dentistry actually make, Howard? Anywhere from 150 to 500, 600, 150 yeah. to 600 probably. And, and, and we know those corporate, the, the corporate guys are buying, they're buying practices that make five and 600 because they know that that corporation, that corporation knows that they can turn that into a bigger business. Grant, you, you own a half billion dollars of real estate. So many dentists come out of school and say, I'd probably save a lot of money if I just went and rented a retail location. Some people think, well, maybe I should buy the land and building. What would you tell a dentist, uh, rent or buy? I would definitely rent. I would not buy, I would not buy that facility unless you're going to make it a business. Unless you're going to make a business of, of buying and renting to other dentists, you should not do a one-off on anything. So, so my, my premise here would be this. If you're going to do something one time, don't do it. If you're going to make a business out of it, if you're going to work out, work out every day. If you're going to love your wife, love her every day, okay? If you're going to make money, make money every day. If you're going to pray, pray every day. If you're going to buy business, like anything worth doing, if it's worth doing once, it's worth doing over and over and over again. If you're not going to make a business out of it, if that's not your business, don't buy that dentistry. Now, what I would tell the dentist to do is this. Explode his revenue, build a giant bottom line, and take that money and start buying rental property. My, my third business is rental property, okay? My first two companies basically funded the third company. Because one day that dentist is not going to be able to get stand over that, stand over that patient. You know, your hands are going to be shaking so bad, dude, ain't nobody going to trust you. So, so, so I would just say, look, take your money. The one business we know will not go away is people renting homes, renting places to live. So I can put off a cavity. I cannot put off my rent. And, and so before I, I would rent where I work, I would probably rent where I live and I would put my money where I could rent to others. And are you liking single families or do you like duplexes, apartments? What do, what do you like? I don't like single family. I do not like duplexes. I don't like fourplexes. I like anything above 16 units. And why is that? Because I need multiple doors. I need, I need enough scale to be worth the risk. So if you're going to buy two units and let's say those two units cost uh, 100 grand, I mean, you, 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 the, the return's just not good enough. Like you're going to put $20,000 down to earn what? 10 or 12,000 bucks a year. It's not worth the exposure. It's a bigger headache. You're better off putting that money in your business. So wait until you can do 16 or 20 or 30 or 60 units, because if it's too small, you have to manage it. It's not worth the energy or the effort. You need to get it big enough, or you just need to put in, like, like we just created a fund. We're approved by the SEC for accredited investors. So, um, You'd be better off putting some money in a fund with somebody that's an owner operator buying deals, not a REIT, not, not something on Wall Street. Because if you're not going to pay attention to it, two units is too small, four units is too small, eight units is too small. Okay. It doesn't produce enough income. You need to get to 16 or 20. Or you take and invest that, reinvest that money in your business. If your business is already doing good and you want to be in the real estate game, then find, find an owner operator that lets you ride on top of their deals. Would you say that dentist should have to save up and buy that 16 unit in cash? Or do you think it's a good enough investment to use uh, debt? Other people? No, you, do, you, you, you definitely want to use debt. You definitely want to use uh, uh, Fannie or Freddie Mac or a local bank because the money's so cheap today. And tell, tell, tell all these dentists why they should read Be Obsessed or Be Average. What's that book about? It's coming out uh, next week. The, 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 this book, yeah. The, well, it's, you can order it now, okay? When you order it now, I'm going to give 13 free coaching sessions for every book order. You get to join me for 13 sessions of coaching. 
where I actually walk through and what I, I talk about what's in the book, what's in that chapter, what I was thinking about when I wrote that, how I applied it to business, how I applied it to my marriage, how I get other people around me that are obsessed. You know, it's very difficult to build a business today when you got so many people around you that are disengaged. You open this show today saying, hey, your, your three or four sons, they watch me every day. Dude, I got people engaged, man. There's something about my message. Okay, this isn't motivation. This isn't some walking on fire, moments of excitement, right? That, that I'm getting into some, to the entrepreneur space and communicating to people in a way that's like, hey, I wanna, I wanna grow my deal. And so be obsessed or be average basically is gonna tell the dentist, look, if you're not all in, then sell your deal right now. Make it official, man, you're not in the deal. Quit getting punished. You're getting punished for being average. OK, you go to you go to sleep at night saying, wow, what if I get sued? What if health care changes again? What if the corporation sets up across uh, across town? What if the rent goes up like you're getting crushed in worry every day for staying small? And so there's 28 million small businesses in America. Uh, Howard, 22 of 22 million have no employees. The dentist has got what, one or two employees, maybe the average five, five employees. OK, under under tremendous scrutiny, lots of changes, new equipment, new costs, new exposure. Like you got to get all in in the game. So I'm, I'm really showing people how to get all in. You have a perfect opportunity right now. Grow your business from 300 grand to a million three and watch what that company's going to pay you. Maybe the guy needs to be thinking about how to sell out right now. So you said there's 28 million small businesses and 22 million have no employees? Zero employees. It's called small business. They should call it no business. So being in business. If I lined up, if I surveyed a hundred dentists, uh, Grant, and said, "What is the number one stress in your life? What keeps you up at night?" They always say the staff. What advice would you give a dentist who is stressed about their staff? They they ask for a raise every time the earth goes around the sun. Um, you know, they they. Um, what advice would you give them to be a leader of that staff? Your staff is a reflection of you. They're disengaged because you are. Well put, buddy. That was very succinct and spot on. You know, you're not obsessed, so why should they be? You're not a fanatic. Why would they be? You're not a leader. You just talk about leadership. Real leaders don't talk about leadership. Real leaders don't walk around. I'm the leader. Dude, you're, you're a leader, man. You know, I, I, I watched this debate last night and they're like, Putin's not a leader. He's a dictator. Dude, the guy's a leader. Okay. He runs a freaking country. Okay. So you're not going to you're not going to talk negative about him in public. So so that's how you need to run a company. You need to run a company, you need to run a company like a dictatorship. And the dentist, he doesn't want to be a dick. He's like, "I want everybody to like me." Well, the, the, at the end of the year, no no your your your, your kids don't even like you. <laughs> like like you got customers that don't like you, right? You, you, you got you got employees that want, always want more. They hold you hostage. I know dentists, they don't even own the company anymore. The people, the people that work for them run the company. Well, dude, that happened to me in business. It'll never happen to me again. Okay, I'm going to be in a partnership. I'm going to be in a deal. I want to run the deal. I have to be the leader. I'm willing to be the guy that takes all the heat, all the hate, all the criticism. But we're going to run this deal. If we run it into the ground, Howard, we're going to run it into the ground on my watch. We're going to show up early and stay late and we're going to make money. So if we run the ship, you know, if we if we get off a of course and run the ship and crash the ship, at least we got some freaking gold and silver. Hey, Grant, another question they have is, uh, let, let's say you need uh, $5,000 for the work and you don't have $5,000. Do you think the dentist should carry that loan and let the patient make, say, $500 a month for 10 months? Or do you think a dentist should always use an outside credit agency and uh, let some, uh, somebody who specializes in financing uh, dentistry? And I, I, think the, I think the dentist should take more responsibility for making sure that money gets from the third party to the, to the dentistry. So you need a finance arm. You need a finance arm within the dentistry. Like, like you, you know, control. Should be in-house or outsourced? Should be in-house. It should be in-house. You know, you, you collect money. I, I, I got an accounting department in here. I'm like, guys, do we have PayPal? Uh, no. Get PayPal, man. Do we have Bitcoin? No. Get Bitcoin. 
Okay. Do we have uh, do we have one coin? No. Get it. Damn it. Get it, dude. Do we take pesos? Take them, bro. <laughs> okay. Do we have a bank here? Do we have visa? Can we get people approved? If you want more money, take responsibility for more money. You don't turn it over to some th third party that doesn't give a shit about your business. You come home at night and your wife's like, hey, did you have a good day today? No. No, we lent some money to to, to, to little Eddie. Eddie needed, had the cavity, had to fix his cavity and Eddie didn't pay us. We got a bunch of lates this month. They're not paying us, right? You, your wife ought to kick you back to the dentistry. Say, get your ass back to the office and go figure out how to collect that money. So, so look, you, if you want to grow your business, imagine going on Shark Tank, Howard, and you tell Mark Cuban, yeah, we got, we got a great company, man, but nobody pays us. What do you think, Mr. Cuban? Okay. <laughs> well, what's he going to say? He's going to say, hey, get out of my face. And by the way, you can't touch my teeth. Look, if you can't run a business, how are you going to fix my mouth? If you can't collect my money, how are you going to fix my cap? Why should I trust you? If you, I walked into a dentist's office right here in Miami. I walked in. I looked around. I said, dude, uh-uh. He brought me in there because, you know, I didn't want to go to another dentist. I said, bro, when's the last time you spent any money on your place, man? Pictures are old. The place is old. The joint's dirty. I can't find any good help. That's what the guy told me. I can't find good help. No, you're not paying anybody, man. Okay. You're disengaged because they're disengaged because you're disengaged. This place is dirty because you're dirty. Okay. You didn't pick up after the last client because you don't pick up. I guarantee if I walk to his car, I'm going to see the same thing. So I walked out of the office. All my money walked out of that office. And now I'm talking negative about this guy. So Grant, how much is that book if it comes with uh, all those training sessions? I think you can buy it on Amazon for $18. And that comes with all the training, online training sessions? Comes with the 13, the 13 coaching sessions. And check this out, Howard. Okay. You can get it on audio, e-reader, book, however you want it. Okay. I'm going to give you the 13 coaching sessions and send me a receipt and a review. Write a review, good or bad. I don't care if you give me one star or five. And I'll give you, I'll give you the full amount of the receipt you email me. I'll give you back as a credit at my store. Nice. So it's already number two, number four, and number six on Amazon, and nobody's even gotten it yet. And that's because of your previous books. Uh, what, what do you think the dentist would learn from the Closer Survival Guide? Do you think it'd make them sell more dentistry if they not, read that book? Not, 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 not if they don't want to make more money. Look, what the dentistry ultimately needs for your dentistry is you need two, two other programs I have. You need... Basically, Grant Cardone Sales Training University. It's a that's a five thousand dollar program. It's it's a nineteen thousand two hundred dollar program on sale for forty nine ninety five. Or or if they if they can't stomach the five grand because they lack commitment to revenue, then you need to at the very least get my Mastering Objections University called masteringobjections.com. It's $995. It's normally, that, that program's 9,000 bucks and it's on sale for $1,000. Do you think Donald Trump hurt the online uh, education business with his uh, university? It didn't hurt mine. I have 23 million people using my program every year. 23 million? 23 million people. Unbelievable. Served, served last year, okay? Thousands of businesses pay us. Thousands of businesses pay us anywhere from forty grand to eighty thousand dollars for our online platform. Same platform I just told you for forty nine ninety five. Back to the back to the sixteen uh, unit deal. What would what would just a ballpark price for that be in your average American metro or rural? Uh, sixteen units. Yeah. Where, what city you live in, Howard? I'm Phoenix. Uh, you're in Phoenix. It's going to cost about you're It's going to be about five hundred grand over over there where you are. Five hundred grand. How was yeah. it going from uh, West Coast uh, LA to Miami East Coast? Was that a culture shock for you? Uh, I, I like it thirteen point three percent better. <laughs> what? Oh, for state income tax? <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, see, th this is a perfect point. Okay, here I am busting my ass, dude, making money, starting companies, 
hiring people, putting putting money at risk. The, the the definition of an entrepreneur, by the way, a dentist is an entrepreneur, or he's just a dentist. Okay. the The definition is an entrepreneur is someone who puts their money at risk in order to create more money. So here I am in California. I moved from Texas at 0% to California. I paid them 10% for 25 years. Started one company, a second company, a third company, a fourth company. Had four companies there employees. I'm paying them 10% on money I could have been making in Texas. I didn't have to pay anything. But, I, but I'm like, I'm cool. Okay, I'm cool. I'll pay the 10%. It's worth it. And then they raised it to 13. And finally, I said, okay, enough is enough. I packed up all my stuff and moved from Beverly to Miami. Packed up my bags and I moved to Miami, okay? Miami Beach. Now, I saved 13.3%, man, on millions and millions of dollars. California now gets zero from me. I go back there as much as I want. I mean, the point of that is this. I moved my family and my business from my friends, from where I was comfortable. I moved. The point of the story is I moved so that I... Because it was the best thing for my business and my money. And you got too many dentists out there that make decisions that are good for whoever and not good for your business. You need to start making decisions that are good for your business because look at what the government's doing, Howard. See, I'll bet you most of your dentists run their business like Democrats and vote like Republicans. <laughs> Explain that in more detail. Well, do you, you guys like, oh, well, we shouldn't. You got a congressman. He, he's in Arizona and he's been there eight years and he's never done anything he promised. Well, you guys going to keep hiring him back in or are you going to get rid of him? A, a, a more conservative voter would say, get rid of the guy. He made a promise and didn't do it. Get rid of him. Okay. But when he runs a business, he's more liberal the way he runs his business. People, to people typically in Arizona vote conservative and then run their businesses like liberals. Well, Sally's been with me so long. She's been with us eight years, you know. She was good the first year, remember? She's been with me so long. Dude, the only reason she's been with you is you won't get rid of her. <laughs> okay? Like, 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 you need to think like the NBA and the NFL. Look, if you don't produce, they get rid of you, period. When Tom Brady quits producing, they will freaking cut him. So you need to, you need to... Run your business like a conservative. Produce or go away. Okay. So, so Grant, another another issue with Dennis is uh, you were born small town Louisiana. I was born small town Kansas. Uh, you made the move from LA, Beverly Hills to Miami. Two thirds of all the dentists go in the big cities where they're not needed, and there's about ten percent of all the rural towns in America don't even have a dentist. Uh, what what do you what would you tell that person saying you know businesses go where they ain't uh, you you moved three thousand miles they they won't move an hour out of town because they're average average people man get punished then they wonder why they can't get their customers to drive for forty minutes then they wonder why they can't get a guy to set an appointment at two o'clock and show up then they wonder why their chairs are empty all day long man Mr Wilson said he was going to come in today he canceled the third time. Dude, no, you know why? Mr. Wilson won't come in because you won't go anywhere. I'm going to go where the money is. I'm going to go where the opportunity is because I'm going to take care of my family. So how would you address the most fundamental issue? The bottom line is they just come out of school and it's just simple fear. They're just afraid. The easy thing is to go get a job at corporate. The easy thing is to go be an employee of the dentist that used to fix their teeth when they were a kid. And it's just downright frightening to just... Go for it. Well, well, how would you coach fear? Feed the, feed the beast. People, and I talk about it in this book, people need to, they need to tap into their attic, their junkie, their beast, the warrior. They need the, 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 uh, the Viking. So like, if you're going to knock me out, I've been bullied. My, I, I was bullied my whole teenage years. And one day I was like, okay, I'm, I'm better off just getting beat up. It's better to get beat up than bullied. And, and so, you know, these kids are getting out of school right now, man. You got, you guys, first of all, you knew the school thing. The only people that should be going to college are dentists. Maybe a dentist, maybe a chiropractor, maybe a, 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 some kind of specialty surgeon, maybe a lawyer, but who needs any more of those? Okay. 
Nobody else needs to go to college. If you went to college to learn how to be a dentist, and by the way, now you know they didn't teach you how to start a dentistry. They showed you how to remove a tooth. There ain't no money in removing a tooth. The money's in building a business. And if a company will pay you for your skill, then somebody would pay you 10 times that to run a business. So what's the risk, you know? Uh, Warren Buffett says the way to reduce risk is not to diversify. The way to reduce risk is to increase your understanding of your business. So nobody's going to pay a dentist any more than somebody's going to pay a plumber or, or somebody's going to pay a cab driver. Nobody's paying cab drivers, man. They're paying the guy that figures out the problem to everybody picking up a cab. So be obsessed or be average. Okay. Be dangerous or be in danger. Be the threat or be threatened. And that's what this book's about is how to tap into that freak, that, that part of you that used to dream big things. I mean, who think, who thinks about being a dentist, putting on a white coat every day, man? I mean, like, come on, every day you got to go do the same thing. Put the little gloves on, get in there, play with the gums, give them the tooth, give the little kid the sucker. Huh? Hey, I'd much rather manage 25 guys doing that deal. But you well, got to think a lot bigger. You got to think a lot bigger than you're thinking about. And if you're coming out of college and all you're thinking about is how do I pay my debt down? How do I get rid of this 80K? Then you're going to say, let me take a job. You know why? Because your mommy, your mommy is inside your head. And your daddy's telling you not to go for it. Oh, you know why they're, do why, why they're telling you not to go for it? Because they didn't go for it, Howard. Grant, you promised me a half hour, and we just went across an hour. First of all, I want to thank you so much for what you've done for my four boys. You're their mentor, your champion. On behalf of Eric, Greg, Ryan, and Zach, I want to say thank you. And thank you for giving uh, these dentists a shot of adrenaline on their way to work this morning uh, so that they can uh, stop being average and become obsessed. Thank you so yep. much, Grant. And Howard, you got it, bro. And look, look, any, any, of, the, any of your uh, listeners that want to take advantage of our university – let me figure out, let me figure out some kind of offer we can do. Okay. Something we can do for them. Maybe I'll do a free kickoff for anybody that does it. I, yeah. I, and that, and I also, we, we have an annual meeting in Las Vegas. When is that, right? It's called townymeeting.com. I've always thought you should uh, come down there and be a <laughs> keynote sometime. How many people are there? Uh, it's usually a thousand dentists. Yeah. I'd love to come do that. Because this really isn't about dentistry. It's about growing your business. And people need to be told the hard truth. You know, people don't like Donald Trump because they, you know, like him or not. He just doesn't know how to talk to people, right? I probably don't either. I don't, I don't probably know how to talk to people either. You know, but, but I'm not talking about politics. I'm not, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm an entrepreneur. I don't, I don't care which one of these people get in office. I'm going to go make mine either way. I make more money when Democrats are in office than Republicans. Right. Because I think the Democrats put everybody to sleep. Everybody's like, yeah, I'm going to get my free phone. I get a free school. I get everything free. You know, so I, I don't know why it is. It doesn't matter to me. I, I don't care if Putin's, if Putin could take charge. I'm going to make my money. And that's what I would like to tell the dentists in Los Angeles. How can you make money in any environment? Okay. Would making 10 times more money be better for you? Would having 100 times, custom, 100 times more customers be better for your business? Even if you're not going to be in the game forever, Howard, if you're going to sell out, sell something big, not something little. And you can find more information on GrantCardone.com. Grant, our, uh, our uh, yearly convention is at uh, Caesars Palace, April 19 to 22nd. You can email me, Howard, at Dentaltown.com if you want to come out and uh, kick off your online university or, or do our uh, talk more. Again, um, I think that um, you said it best. Dentistry has been asleep for probably a century. And yeah. the reason uh, when de I, dentists say, why is corporate dentistry coming in there? I said, because it's, it's more lucrative than their other alternatives, more lucrative than the bond market, the stock market. That's why they're flying in. Totally, man. And they're like, hey, let's go grab these, let's go grab these guys that are asleep. So Maybe you guys need to quit, and quit taking your own laughing gas. Be obsessed or be average. Grant, thank you so much for coming on my show, buddy. Thanks, Howard. You got it, buddy.